Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Clear? So now with this idea about the structure, let us talk about the life cycle of a pteridophyte. So here we are talking about the life cycle of a fern. So where, which is the plant here? Plant is the sporophyte. So here if you see, this is the mature sporophyte. So mature sporophyte is nothing but the plant itself. So this is the, these are the ferns. Now these ferns will have sporangium and the sporangium will consist of the spores. So here if you look at this, these are the leaf-like appendages between which sporangium are present. So these are the sporophylls, the leaf-like structures are the sporophylls, right? So these are the sporophylls and in the sporophylls are enclosed small structures called sporangium. So this is the magnified image of a sporangium. Inside this sporangium are present the spores. So these spores are released. So what will happen? The spores will germinate. The spores will germinate to form the gametophyte. So you see the spores jam germinate to form gametophyte. This is the young gametophyte. This is a slightly matured gametophyte. What is gametophyte? That structure which produces the gametes. So now when this gametophyte matures, it will produce the male and the female gametes. So this portion of the gametophyte is the antheridium. Antheridium is the male gametophyte. And this portion of the gametophyte is the archegonium. So this is the female gametophyte. So the male gametophyte will produce the male gametes which are sperms and the female gametophyte will produce the female gamete which is egg. So now this sperm and egg. Now the sperms will come out from the male gametophyte and it will come to the female gametophyte. Now how will it come from male gametophyte to female gametophyte? By See, here it is on the same plant. So if it is on the same plant, it can anyways come internally. Externally also, it can be carried away by many agents like air or water. So once it reaches the female gametophyte, the fertilization takes place. There is fusion between egg and sperm it happens inside the female gametophyte. So as a result, zygote is formed in the female gametophyte. This zygote then will gradually grow to form a new sporophyte. So gradually the sporophyte will grow. So here again, if you see, this is the female gametophyte. So on top of the female gametophyte, the sporophyte is growing. So sporophyte is attached to the female gametophyte and it is receiving its nutrition from the gametophyte. And then gradually when the sporophyte matures, we do not see the gametophyte now. And the plant which we see as a pteridophyte or as a fern is nothing but the sporophyte. So this is about the life cycle of a pteridophyte. See, all you need to understand is the basic um, concept. So basic concept of reproduction is that you need gametes for reproduction. Who will produce gametes? Gametophyte. So from gametophytes, gametes will be produced. They will fuse. They will produce zygote. Zygote will form the sporophyte. Sporophyte will release the spores. The spores will again form the gamete. So this process is common to all type of plants. It is just that some plants will have some additional uh, stages. For example, in cases of uh, in case of uh, mosses, we saw that additional step of protonema, right? Now, in case of these ferns, we see that the sporophyte is the um, dominant phase because here the sporophyte is the long-lived plant which we actually see around us. So here, what are the characteristics of the sporophyte which makes it the dominant phase? So here the sporophyte is multicellular. The sporophyte is well differentiated between root, stem and leaves. You see here roots, leaves and stem. So it is well differentiated as well. Moreover, it is long lived. So sporophyte is the uh, dominant phase of the plant. Once we have understood this, now it is time to talk about the gametophyte and the sporophyte. So let us look at the distinction between a gametophyte and a sporophyte in case of a fern. So in this case, we saw that gametophyte was small, however multicellular, mostly photosynthetic thallus. So if you look at the life cycle of the fern, what do we see? The gametophyte is a small structure. 
It is multicellular and it is mostly photosynthetic. It, it mostly has a green colored pigment and it can perform photosynthesis. So this is often termed as prothallus. So this gametophyte is often known as prothallus. When I talk about sporophyte, it is multicellular, well differentiated, because of which the sporophyte becomes the dominant phase in case of a fern. See, why I am telling all these things to you is that I want you to judge yourself which phase is the dominant phase in which plant's life. For example, if I talk about moss, it is a bryophyte. So when you look at the life cycle of a bryophyte, you yourself should be able to tell which phase is dominant. So what are the characteristics of a phase to be dominant? It should be long-lived, it should be multicellular, it should be well-differentiated. So, but in case of a fern, which is a pteridophyte, we saw that sporophyte is the dominant phase. So you will have to evaluate yourself that which phase is dominant and why that phase is dominant. So let us have a quick comparison between the life cycle of a moss and a fern. So we discussed both of them, right? So moss, that is a bryophyte, when you look at its life cycle, what happens here? Here, the gametophyte is the dominant phase. So this is the dominant phase. But whereas in case of a fern, the sporophyte is the dominant phase. So this is the fern and this is moss. So here gametophyte was the dominant phase. So this was the long-lived plant which we see. But in this case, sporophyte is the long-lived plant that we see. So here from gametophytes, gametes were formed, the male gametes and the female gametes, and they fused together to form the zygote. So in this case, from sporophyte, spores were formed. And these spores germinate to form the gametophyte. And then from the gametophyte, the gametes are formed. But in this case, the process goes in other way around. First, a zygote is formed and then from the zygote, it will develop to form a sporophyte. And here, it, the spores develop to form a gametophyte, right? So here, sporophyte is the intermediate phase. Whereas here, in this case, gametophyte is the intermediate phase. Now, this sporophyte in case of moss will then give rise to spores which will germinate to form the gametophytes back. In this case, this gametophyte will form the gametes which will fertilize to form back the sporophyte, right? So, you now understand both the life cycles that how the life cycle changes if your dominant uh, phase changes from a gametophyte to a sporophyte. Clear? Okay. So with this, I think that I have been able to explain you the characteristics and the behavior of pteridophytes and bryophytes. Now we will look at the plant types of pteridophytes based upon uh, the type of gametes which they produce. Now the first, they are divided into two types. First is homosporous and the other one is heterosporous. Homosporous. Homo means same. So if the sporangia produce similar spores, the spores which are produced by the sporangia, if they are similar, then they are known as homosporous. So example of homosporous would be, in fact, most of the pteridophytes are homosporous. So ferns are also homosporous because the spores produced by the sporophyte are all similar. Whereas the other type of plant is heterosporous. So here, the spores which are produced are not similar. So some spores are smaller in size, whereas the other spores are larger in size. So mega spores are those which are larger in size. And microspores are those which are smaller in size. Now these large spores, that is the mega spores, these spores germinate to form the female gametophyte. Whereas the small microscope, microspores germinate to form the male gametophyte. So two types of spores will be formed, larger spores and smaller spores. Larger spores will germinate, it will form female gametophyte. Smaller spores will germinate, it will form male gametophyte. And then this female gametophyte will produce the female gametes. The male gametophytes will produce the male gametes. And then the female and male gametes will fuse together to form the zygote.
right so there are uh, there are some teredophytes which are also heterosporous in nature so examples of heterosporous plants are selaginella and salvinia so now here you see this plant if you compare the ferns with the selaginella do you see the difference in the size of the leaves in ferns you actually have bigger leaves but in case of selaginella you really have small leaves so that's what I was telling you some time back, right? That some uh, teredophytes have big leaves while others have smaller leaves. So Selaginella and Salvinia are some plants which produce two types of spores, two varieties of spores, one bigger one and the other smaller one. So on the basis of the type of spores which are produced by the teredophytes, they are classified into homosporous and heterosporous plants. So now even in pteridophytes, there was a further classification done based on some similarities and differences. So pteridophytes were classified into four groups, Psilopsida, Lycopsida, Sphenopsida and Pteropsida. So these were the four classes into which pteridophytes were classified. However, we will not get into the details of these classes so that you will study in your higher classes. So for now, we will end our discussion on pteridophytes and we will move on. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.